Hi everyone, Nathan and uh, Mrs. MLD here from Mighty Lancer Games. How is everybody this fine evening? I uh, can see a few people in the chat already. Reese and uh, Pete the Priest and Original Turd John. Mrs. MLG here alongside me. She's going to be painting this dragon, dragon bauble this evening. And I am currently working on my brass scorpion. So this is a model I've had in the works for two and a half years now. Which uh, is far too long really, but I keep doing a little bit and putting it away and doing a little bit and putting it away. And, uh, I think it's about time I finished it off. So just putting a little bit of an ink wash on some of these areas. I'm going to leave that a little bit so I've got something to hold on to while I put that along to one side to dry. And then uh, we're going to work on a couple of the armour panels. While, uh, while all the inking dries and then we'll go back and do a little bit more on the bits that I couldn't grab onto. Clean up my work area. You see that I'm quite a messy painter here. Mrs. MLG is a much, much cleaner work area than myself. <laughs> so with the brass scorpion there's all these segmented Segmented pieces. Are you, uh, are you... Oh, okay. So uh, all these different pieces here, and I need to, I need to freshen up. So it's good to be can't see me stretching and leaning. Yeah. So uh, all these pieces need the uh, red sorting out because it's not how I want it, and also the gold is a bit patchy. And uh, this is probably the second or third time I've painted over this now. <laughs> Pete, hi, Wicked Daddy. Pete the Priest says he's given up and he needs some brown spray paint. Given, given up with what, Pete the Priest? I, I think I've missed something. Don't know. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to get some paint on my wet palette and I'm going to crack on with trying to sort these bits out here. So we're going to go with, and, and I thought I'd got it out, I thought I'd got my gold out ready for that. Hmm. So I decided that I was going to rebrush, uh, right now I see, says he's paint, hand brushing some scenery because his airbrush is rubbish. I understand. So I said that I was going to repaint the gold on the Brass Scorpion with bronze, uh, some Vallejo bronze, because I decided that it was a much nicer colour. So this is what we're going to do. And I'm not going to put it on the wet palette because that would be incredibly foolish. I'm going to put it in this palette over here. And in my corner, I'm going to paint this dragon bauble, the baubles, uh, to hopefully look a bit like this one that I did before. Apart from, I'm fairly sure I did this one with a lighter undercoat, and I have put um, Reaper grey liner on this one. So we'll see what happens there, and I'm just going to use. Army Painter Stone Golem as my first layer of dry brushing. I'm basically just dry brushing. So we'll see how it goes. And it's got a paintbrush stuck in it so that I can hold it. Oh, yeah, wow. So. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, it's alright. It's alright. I'm going to switch to a bigger brush. Because what I'm going to do is uh, liberally apply the, Bye, the brass. Good evening. Good evening. I think I've at some point I've put the wrong uh, paintbrush cover on this paintbrush. Hi, Goblin Square. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Right. I'm going to use this this paintbrush. This is my uh, this is my rescued paintbrush. We're going to try out some of the uh, 
brush cleaner, I think. I'm going to have to give, give some brush cleaner a go for a couple of my brushes. Finally, I'm going to have to relent and clean some of my paint brushes. Uh, so, I'm going to liberally apply some Vallejo bronze. I'm not going to worry too much about getting on this red because I'm going to repaint the red as well. And, uh, and I want to get a fine, uh, a good coat around the edges because if you can see, if I can get this a bit closer to the camera, can you see around the edges here where, when I've painted this before, because I spray undercoated it, I undercoated it with my airbrush and uh, I undercoated it with a silver, a bright silver. And then when I've painted this before, I was trying to be oh so neat and you can still see glints of that silver on the edge where the red meets the gold uh, and that's really bugging me. So I've decided that I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna paint the whole lot gold and then gold is a decent undercoat for red anyway, or can be. So then I'm going to uh, touch it back in with the red and try and not blob it all over. So that's, that's where we're going. So we're just gonna try and get a nice smooth coat of bronze all over the edges of the uh, the gold here. So Goblin Square, we're looking forward to your stream at uh, at eight. What Hi, what treats have you got lined up for us this evening? Or can't you tell us is it top secret? Well, Goblin Square says he's having some audio issues, so that should know for me. Ah, I don't know. Can can you hear us, Goblin Squire? Pete the Priest has redeemed a hydrate. <laughs> yeah. I hope it works today, Tony. Yeah. Hi, Tony. How are you doing? I know you've been having some problems. I uh, I appreciate you persevering and trying to trying to trying to watch us, even though it's not working for you. Yeah. What? Well, what, uh, what is everybody up to this evening? Anything exciting? Mrs. MLG has just shown me your Sphinx in Discord, Pete the Priest. That looks uh, very cool. Yeah, I can't, I can't decide. Not not your painted version of it. I can't decide whether I like the model in general, that Sphinx. I think... Uh, I don't know. I can't decide whether I like it. The Reaper Sphinx is a lot smaller. And uh, I think that the size that that one is, the, the WizKids one, is more fitting of what I have in my mind of a Sphinx model. But I'm not sure I like the pose. Don't know. Not sure. Not sure. <laughs> Hi, Chester. How are you? Good Grey evening. Primer. Oh, Grey Primer as well. Hi. Hi, Grey Primer. How are you doing? Yeah, all right, I see. He doesn't like it, but his wife does, so he doesn't really have a choice. Excellent. Well, we have to do what our better halves uh, ask every once in a while, don't we? Oh, that, that was good. 32 shag nasty. <laughs> I'm glad you went that way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't. It didn't show up on the script on the stream. It's it's uh, thanks for uh, thanks for following us. Thanks for following us. Chunkster says he's going to come in tomorrow. Anything? Uh, anything in particular you're on the lookout for, Chunkster? We uh, we have. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I moved it. Thank you, yeah. Brian. Thank you. Appreciate these things. What was I going to say? Chunkster. Yes, we've uh, we've added some uh, or or got. I've, I've dug out the box of uh, Batman and DC figures that I couldn't remember where I put it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've uh, we've got those. In reachable distance, should you uh, like to look at any of our bargain bin of uh, of Batman 
figures, which are all the uh, all the metal ones. I know I know there's some of the resin ones and different ones now, but we've got a uh, yeah bargain bin of Batman figures that might be of interest to you. Oh, and Keldon Raven didn't see uh, didn't see you sneak in there. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. I really like this um, bauble, but it's really, really hard to hold and paint. <laughs> yeah, well, when I painted these before, these are really hard to hold. And when I painted these before, I had them all blue tacked onto the tops of paint pots, and I've taken them off, and I can't remember what I've done with all my paint pots with blue tack stuck all over them. Why don't you just get Because oh, I've started on it now. <laughs> Might have to. Yeah, that's that's definitely more what I was looking for. That's definitely more the bronzy, goldy colour. And then I'll highlight you a little bit there, from there. And I think that'll look loads better than it looked before. Right, well, uh, let's, move, let's move on to the next one. Let's sort, sort our uh, painting. I don't know, what is uh, what are you after, Keldon? Kelden Raven. Oh, excellent. Tony says he's thinking about having a crack at one of the Twisted Minis for his next project. Oh, cool. That'd be good. Yeah. Something else. You've, uh, you got me looking at the um, things again the other day as well, Tony. The, um, excuse me. Yes, Pete the Priest, we've got several brown sprays in. Several, but uh, plenty of choice, plenty. Uh, yeah, Tony has got me looking uh, at. Sorry, yes, got me, got me looking at the uh, the. Is it Dunn's mouth? The the MDF scenery from uh, War Cradle, which uh, we looked at. Didn't we the other night? But the, everything, everything was out of stock. But now I think that it is back in stock. So uh, we might have to might have to be adding some of that. Mm -hmm. I like it. Ah, it says the web store is great. Thank you very much. But it never beats actually visiting the store, even though we only manage once a year. Well, when we won't hold that against you because we like uh, we like having visitors, obviously. And uh, I think it definitely definitely is worth a trek to mighty lancer games and seeing all the stuff that we've crammed in have you have you been to the new store tony says that it's still in production so more is available yeah i, I really like the gloomberg stuff as well and but that was that was out of stock when i looked the other day but uh, yeah, that, that looks really nice as well. Might have to invest in a couple of bits and pieces for the shop. Have you seen uh, on the website, uh, Keldon and everybody else, the uh, customer gallery? So you can uh, submit your pictures of your painted miniatures in the customer gallery for the, for the website if you want to. They've got some awesome additions that look really, really cool. Have you? Cool. Oh, Goblin Squire has redeemed a posture check. So, uh, Mrs. MLG has got a new chair. Uh -huh. So, how is your new chair after you've been sitting in it for a day? Uh, yes, chair. It's good, yeah. <laughs> Comfy. You, you've got me a new chair because I kept stealing yours. No, I bought it because I love you. <laughs> wow. Well. I'm having a bit of trouble with my blue tech. Technical problems. There we go, that'll do. And then we'll add that bit stuck on there. Like that. <laughs> yeah, but you, Grey Primer says that he can't wait to make a, a visit, but he's, uh, he's got a long way to come. Doesn't he? 
longer than longer the distance than many of other customers, I think. So, uh, is the Game Expo on this year? Um, I can't remember if I saw that they were doing it or they were going to do like a virtual one again. I can't remember what uh, what's happening. We've been, well, or we are confirmed to attend Salute at London in November. And I have been contacted. Here's a, here's the first one. I forgot to tell you about the tea time. Uh, we've been contacted by another show asking us if we would like to attend, and that's that's in November. That is Warfare at Reading, which is a long way away, like uh, like Salute, I guess. So need to give that yeah, one a little just bit. Have, of just having fun with you too. <laughs> so uh, Caroline's asking something. All ah, right, it, it, so he knows he needs to augment his greys and browns for his paints and he might be looking at more green stuff world rollers and of course a whole basket load of minis and the wife will be after our shiniest dice sets and the mini me will be after anything we let her get. <laughs> so, um, Excellent. Any news on green stuff world? Because that's really got held up in shipping, hasn't it? Uh, yep. Uh, I have emailed green stuff world again <laughs> we, we do asmo we do i know it's tiny but to us everything is miles away <laughs> yeah yeah i know what are you telling I, me about green stuff yeah so I've, I've emailed him again and asked him like what's going off and uh, i'm wait, just waiting on a reply waiting on a reply so uh yeah we uh we do we you <laughs> we make out like the the country is massive but and, and i know that's a over exaggeration isn't it because it's, co it, it's absolutely tiny so i have a an auntie who lives in uh or well, just outside los angeles and i know that when i've been over to visit a couple of times in the past that California itself is absolutely huge and you could probably fit the UK into like a small part of uh, California let alone the rest of uh, the rest of the states it's absolutely immense absolutely immense and, and, and we think that something that's three or three or four hundred miles away is is too far I get car sick, so everything's too far. Yeah. Uh, Grey Prime was telling me about the thingy. That oh, the Game Expo. Limited numbers this year allowed to attend UK Game Expo in August this year. Feels too soon to me, so I'll wait till next year. Yeah, it's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we. Uh, I agree with you there. I think it's. Uh, it is a bit soon for large events, and. I was I was definitely in two minds about um, going to salute as a trader. I, I still don't know what it's going to be like in terms of attendance. I think I think it might be uh, okay, and that's in November, not till November. But uh, I will have had both of my jabs by then. So uh, and, and uh, all the all the staff that are coming with us should have had as well so i'm fairly certain that we should be okay and uh what have you but a lot can happen between now and yeah then. a lot can happen between now and then but because they've decided that the show is going ahead so short of another another uptick in the uh, the pandemic situation uh, and the show's going ahead we will be attending or uh, other disaster obviously but yeah so we're, we're hopefully going to be there and uh, hopefully we will be greeting many of the wargaming fraternity but that is we're not booking anything in before that that's uh, that's definitely far enough away <laughs> if you're with me although we do need to start getting prepared 
in terms yeah. of uh, topping up our our show stock and things like that. Start getting the uh, start getting the racks ready and stuff now. I think. Oh, oh once I've sorted me. Uh, Paperwork obligations out of it anyway. No, I don't start talking about accounting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah. I'm sure there's much more exciting things that you can tell yeah. us. I know. Yeah. Just uh, get an go and get an accountant and they and they can take care of all your stuff for you. But what they don't say don't when say they do that is Come on, talk okay. about brass scorpion. Yeah, right. So this brass scorpion is a uh, was a birthday gift from my beautiful wife. One's me. And uh, yeah, and uh, that was for my birthday two and a half years ago, and it's taken me this long, or over two and a half years ago, and it's taken me this long to even get to this stage because on the day of my birthday, I spent the day building it, washing it, cleaning it. It's. Uh, Wall or dry brush? Which one? This one, mine. No, it's a Citadel. Citadel on this one. And mine's a Green Stuff World brush that I'm using here. I I like mine, my uh, Green Stuff World one as well. And I was going to bring some of the new GW brushes home and forgot them like a massive numpty. Oh cool, Moxie's uh, Moxie's done his game off for the Reef Challenge League. Awesome. Game, Oh, sorry. Uh, Moxie's done his beer moth. We'll have to have a look. Sorry, sweetie. That looks awesome, Moxie. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Fantastic. That looks really, really cool. What did you use for the base? Yeah, that's that's right, Goblin Square. It might not be as far apart, but it takes us forever to get there. Yeah. <laughs> this looks like I'm tickling him under his chin. <laughs> I like the, uh, I definitely like the mud effect that you've done on the uh, on the claws as well you wanted it to make it look like it had just finished digging through something excellent Uh, I haven't watched the preview all the way through yet. I'll be uh, I'll be honest. The uh, there's a couple of them that look pretty cool. I saw a clip of one. I don't know which uh, which one of them it is, but I saw a clip of one where there were some orcs, and uh, they look pretty cool. And I don't know if the is there going to be a Sisters of Battle one that's like a follow or on a development of the 40k trailer that they did. Where the uh, the sister and the Imperial Guardsman and the Space Marine are fighting the Necrons. The quality of, of these animations, and I understand that GW have, have decided to directly uh, commission some of the people who were making fan animations, where, haven't they? But the quality of some of these things looks absolutely awesome. I definitely like the more CGI style ones than the anime style art but I think they all look like they've got promise Moxie used textured paint uh, Armageddon dust for the base awesome it looks fantastic it Moxie looks absolutely brilliant are you ha all sorted with your trio and your duo and everything then
<laughs> You're right there, Naz. The uh, the roads here are terrible. Absolutely shocking. I saw a uh, saw a little video earlier on while I was eating my breakfast this morning of a police chase that was taken from a helicopter and even from the heli like this is a bit of a rambling story but even from the uh, helicopter you can see all the massive potholes in the road and all the all the uh, cracks and what have you in the motorway as these people are trying to evade the cops and I was just thinking that's so typical like it can't be anywhere else but the UK the state of the roads because every other country takes much more uh, care and attention to their public highways it's ridiculous and we have to pay car like road tax on our cars for the privilege anyway I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get political <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, how about you, Grey Primer? Are you are you uh, excited about any of them? I was going to start watching the uh, the little preview thing the other day, and then little Miss MLG came over and. Uh, asked me to play a game instead so I, I got distracted and I haven't watched it again yet I should have should have watched it last night before I, while I was trying to get to sleep but you'll have to tag, tag crafty in the discord and see if you need any help with anything there's always some of us that don't mind doing stuff for no points moxie yeah definitely it's just we're running out of time now <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing with your giant wicked day? Are you on your phone, Goblin Squire? Because we've had loads of problems with watching Twitch on the phone recently. I don't know why I'm masking when you he can't hear us. <laughs> <laughs> You have to type him a message in uh, oh. God, this this bronze looks loads better than the gold. Oh that yeah, yeah the, uh, Grey Crimer says he's all about Angels of Death, the Blood Angels series. The the clips that I've seen before for that look really, really good. Are they introducing some uh, they've been introduced some uh, Gene Steeler cult as the bad guys, haven't they, I think. It looks uh, looks like it could be pretty good, but I think isn't there a couple of minutes more of it in the in the preview? Pete the priest has redeemed hat me, but you but you can't see what we're wearing. I could say you've got out on. Yeah, I'll put my fedora on. Which one do you want? <laughs> you've got you them. I didn't put them there. I didn't put them near you, you've got them. No, I don't want them. Okay. I can make a little hat for this. <laughs> the, mini, the mini has to wear the hat. Won't be able to see it. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, it's taken over the entire screen. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear this one. There you go, um, Moxie Craft is in Discord now. I'm just getting this finished and I've got the rest of the way. All right, doing your um, courses. There John was. There John says, I was just looking at your location on Google Street View and even though Google still shows a shoe store, yeah it does, yeah, at your location the street looks lovely. And it looks like a short walk. Oh, it is. It's literally the bottom of the uh, the bottom of the street, which, which isn't far at all, is the harbour oh, and yeah. the beach. 
and uh, everything else. Maybe I'll win the lottery and I can visit someday. Well, that would be lovely. Yeah. Yeah, it does still show a, a shoe shop, which is very annoying. It's definitely not a shoe shop anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'll have, to, uh, I'll have to make some tiny hats. I actually, I act, this is really sad. Are you ready for my, my pathetically me story? I had a dream last night, right, that I'd made some tiny hats and that we had a hat on my hand and we were dancing, like lifting the hat up like this and doing that, like, and that's the kind of thing I dream about hats for the stream. <laughs> Oh no, oh no, there's no hope, is there? No. I was going to say something, I can't remember what it was. It does, it does look really funny you sat there in the hat and no one can see you. It's genuinely <laughs> got a hat on. <laughs> And I've gone all quiet. Mm -hmm. So what have we done today? Um, today, today we have created pre-orders for the uh, whole next wave of WizKids unpainted minis. There they are. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we've got like proper pre-orders listed on the web store and everything. Is that something different? That, yeah, that's GW. WizKids. <laughs> uh, so yeah, WizKids Unpainted Minis, the Wave 14 figures, which are due uh, any time, really. So apparently, this is uh, unfortunately just the vagaries of international shipping. So uh, stores in the States have already received their releases and are expecting to be able to start selling them from this Friday. But stores in the UK have uh, not even been uh, told when we are getting our stock, let alone the fact that they uh, are releasing imminently. Tony says he's wearing a hat to support us. <laughs> What's your hat, Tony? So is there any cool with kids then? What's your favourite? Well, I, I'll be honest, I haven't actually looked at the pictures because I allocate, allocated the task to our uh, uh. e-commerce manager department. <laughs> and I've been, uh, I've been doing other exciting things like checking off deliveries and putting stock away. So uh, I don't know. There's some pretty cool sounding ones. Um, there's pretty a, cool sounding ones. Yeah, yeah. There's ones. a there's a there's a Cosmo Wolf, which sounds pretty cool, or a Cosmos Wolf, and um, that sounds interesting, and a Cosmos Serpent. There is a Sky Coach. Oh yeah, the wolf with the things in it. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I'm not seeing that. Oh, and that angel's nice. Yeah, you see. Yeah, so there's uh, yeah, so there's the wolf, there's a serpent, there is the sky coach, which is um, like a flying. There aren't any seaweed monsters, Pete. We looked. <laughs> yeah. It's just the shambling. Oh yeah, so um, shambling mounds are out of stock, but you could paint one of those up as a seaweed monster. Yeah, but Pete didn't like it for that. No, no, there's a, a actual uh, WizKids shambling mound figure. Yeah. But it's, but it's, out, uh, of it's, out, it's out. Yeah, it's out of stock. We're waiting for those as well. They're, they're overdue on my uh, on my sheet that I get on it every day from the distributors that tells me when different things are arriving. They're listed as overdue because they haven't had their stock yet. So we don't. I was talking to somebody today, and uh, me and Mrs. MLG. We're talking over tea, and the uh, uh, there's obviously so much stuff going on in shipping around the world that most of these figures and things are produced, and board games and other stuff produced in China. That we've got like just delays all over the place. 
Uh, Tony says that that brass is looking nice, Nathan. What colours have I used so far? So, what I had done was I spray undercoated all of, with my airbrush, uh, the mini, and I did it black, and then I sprayed it uh, with Vallejo Steel, whatever I've done with it. You don't really need to see it, I guess. But I, I, I sprayed it all with Model Air Steel. And then I painted over the top of it. So this is uh, brass. This is Vallejo brass. But I've decided that it's... I don't like it, basically. So now I am using, uh, over the top of that, Vallejo bronze. I mean white. It's all run out. <laughs> oh, do you want my white? Do you want me, do you want me nuclear white? So, uh, yeah, Vallejo bronze over the top of this, like, more ready gold. And I, I think it looks great. This is just what I wanted. Something that wasn't quite as as vivid. Because I want to make the red really uh, deep. When I've been to Warhammer World and looked at the Brass Scorpion there, which is the one that um, is featured... So it's in the cabinet in uh, one of their large displays. And it's the one that they've used for the photos on the Forge World website. And it's got a really nice deep red uh, on it that's got kind of patterns in the red. So all this, this area, this armor panel area, is this beautiful, deep, glossy red. And that's what I want to get to. But I want to make this gold on the outside look um, nice shall we say, nice, but not so that it detracts from the glossy red. And I've seen some of these painted in a variety of amazing colours. So, you, yeah, I've still, still got my hat on. So even though it's supposed to be a corn demon engine, so uh, corn being the god of blood and skulls and slaughter. Lovely. Yeah. Bit of fluff stuck in there. I'm just going to take my hat off. So, uh, yeah, I've seen some painted in like blues, and I've seen uh, I've seen an absolutely amazing one. I don't know if it's still listed on uh, Games Workshops like gallery on the on the listing for the Brass Scorpion, but they had a they had one painted that somebody had submitted that was painted in a fantastic rust scheme. Uh, with loads of weathering on and what have you, and it looked absolutely amazing. I think that would be cool, but I really want this to be a, a nice display piece. Probably never going to use it in a game. I just want it to uh, look really good. And that is part of the reason why it's taken me so long to even get to this stage, because I don't want to mess it up. And uh, and once I've done this thing, because this, uh, this was the first one, I've got some other... Forge well models to paint and they're going to get painted in the same scheme so we've got a, a Kaitan I think is called a Kaitan Ravager cross between a, a Imperial Knight and a Lord of Skulls which is a, a absolutely fantastic model which was another birthday gift from my beloved oh it's so stuff you want don't you and it all just sits in a box so yeah i've even got to build that i haven't built that yet <laughs> uh i've got a blood slaughterer which is a lovely smaller demon engine from uh, forge world that that still needs assembling as well mm -hmm. and then i've got a uh, i believe it is called a decimator which is another smaller one so they're absolutely fantastic. And once I've painted all of these, once I've got all of these done, then, then I'm going to paint uh, Angrath the Unbound, I believe he's called, the Forge World Bloodthirster, which I have got uh, in the cabinet at the shop. And that has never had any paint on it whatsoever. So uh, that's an eventual paint job that's gonna get done. And I've also, I've got loads of stuff, I've got loads of stuff to paint. I've got a, uh, I've got a really nice Cthulhu mini outside in my office that I would like to paint at some point. Unless you want to paint it, because you'll do a better job than me. Oh, that's nice. 
that's not true. And also, I don't know where it looks like. Um, well, we can tell you later. I'll have to show you. Vallejo Hull Red is a beautiful deep dark brown red that works extremely well for dark dramatic reds. Funny you should mention that, Tony, because that is uh, one of the colours that I have got uh, lined up to do my red. <laughs> That's uh, Hull Red um, and I've got a couple of others with my final highlight colour is going to be uh, this Ferrari red to get a really nice really nice kind of bright finish to it so I don't believe your grey primer yeah I was just going to say that grey primer it, says it, all this stuff is painted I'm not sure if that happens and the world ends that's what I heard yeah and what did Reese say blood slaughter is an awesome model he needs another Well, there's a, there's a shop in there that you could... Yeah, it's a Forge model. Oh, is it? Yeah. And unfortunately, we can't sell them. Which is a real shame, but also probably a good thing, because I would end up having low, even more stuff, wouldn't I, that I couldn't do anything with if we could stock it. Grey Primer says that they are all painted matte grey. <laughs> And that's the idea. What's the idea? Painting it Matt Gray, because his name's Gray Primer. Oh, oh dear me. Yep. What a lucky lady you are. Uh, Reese is. What does Reese say? I, I think we might be thinking of two separate models, Reese. <laughs> the, uh, I'm sure it's called the Blood Slaughterer. The little thing I'm thinking of is like a kind of almost beetle-backed... <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny, I don't know. Uh, yeah, like a little beetle-backed hunched thing with... Uh, Big choppy claws. That doesn't sound like a blood slaughter. Blood, blood slaughter sounds like it should be some massive thing with wings. Yeah, I know, it's a, like a. Well, it's not exactly tiny. It's. I don't know, dreadnought sized. And then there's. Uh, there's the Age of Sigma one race. That might be the one that you're thinking of. Is, is that that's might be called the Blood Slaughter or something like that? The Korgoroth thing in the that was in the original starter set. I meant Blood Slaughter. Ah, right. Squire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's phones. We've had loads of people say. To Tony's never moving his phone again because he's just got it to work. I don't know if it's a Twitch thing because it's only just started doing it. My mine's doing it as well when I try and watch things on the phone. That's no good. Good job we've got. Uh, multiple monitors so you can be uh, keeping an eye on the streams while you're working my darling well that's what i do with uh goblin squires what i've got on one screen and what i'm doing on another and rubies have rubies on one screen while i'm doing something ah. awesome Awesome. Yeah, and I and I just slack and don't watch any. Oh, you know me. Really, too busy. Normally at work, that's you know, 
can't watch stuff while you're at the shop. No. No. I think the uh, the Warhammer Plus thing I was thinking earlier on that it would be cool if uh, if they allowed us to play it in the shop. So we've, we've got some TVs to uh, fasten to the wall so we can display our tournament results and things in the gaming room upstairs. Thought it'd be quite cool if we could be able to yeah be able to play like the Warhammer TV stuff through the tellies, that'd be funky. But don't know whether that's going to be possible because we don't really know a lot of details about it currently. I've on only just... No. Nah, only just discovered today uh, that it's going to be 6 o'clock on Saturday that we get to find out, 6 o'clock on Saturday evening that we get to find out what's in the new... Age of Sigma starter set. How excited are you for that grey primer? Moxie's uh, redeemed a hydrate, my dear. I've buried mine. Tony says he's is still working. It must be proximity to the uh, steak smell. Oh, just, ah, sound is that, effects. Is that your new noise? Yeah. Yeah, me, me too, Tony. I hope I like the models, whatever they, uh, whatever they are, whether they're troglodytes or hobgoblins or I don't know. Pre-order one now, Grey Primer. Reserve your one. I've no idea what uh, what the uh, thing is going to be. We do know, we do know that it's going to be a launch style box similar to Indomitus. That's one thing that the trade team have told us. Uh, but we don't know prices or anything other than that. So I'll be uh, I'll be watching it on Saturday evening with everybody else to try and find out what's going on and then hopefully we might be able to start as a store start getting our orders in for how many we're going to stock on uh, on monday next week so we shall uh, we shall see what the what the deal is but apparently it's going to be an all new faction is uh, is what they've said that nobody will be expecting, which I think's. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm uh, I'm way out of camera. Yeah, so I I don't know how the uh, Indomitus and other sets have been priced in your neck of the woods, Asmo, but the uh, the conversation that I've had with our rep leads me to think that it'll probably be around the same kind of price as Indomitus but so in the UK that was 125 pounds and uh, for the value of the or the the amount of models that you got inside I think that that was quite a reasonable price most companies like ourselves sold them for uh, 100 to 110 pounds I don't know how uh, how that worked out with the exchange rate. I know that we had a customer from Japan contact us and uh, he asked us about buying some because in the state, in uh, Japan even, it worked out about £300 to buy one. And we're not allowed to sell them outside of the EU now, so that's uh, a shame. But unfortunately we had to direct him to his local uh, local stores oh sorry no, I, was... I, just, you just I did I did no no I just I'd finished what I was saying <laughs> it's just uh 
Yeah. They've GW have imposed a uh, part of the contract with it with stores that we're not allowed to sell anything outside of the EU now. Which I mean it's fine, it's their uh, their product and they, but it's it's a strange rule because we can sell it for whatever we want. So if we wanted to charge like double the RRP for something, then that's entirely uh, allowable. Or if we wanted to sell something at a loss, then obviously that's perfectly fine. We we can set whatever price we want for the products, but we're limited to who we can sell to, which seems a bit odd. But then them's the rules. And they're very strict. They yeah, are. We've uh, we've had had a situation in the past when we first started selling GW products and when we had the first store and we'd listed all of the products and we'd Bye Great Promise! Oh, bye, see you later. Thanks for coming. We'd we'd listed all of the products, however many it was. Almost two thousand I think. And uh, and then we got it. A contact from GW telling us that we needed to go in and change all of the pictures that we'd listed things with because we weren't allowed to use certain image types and we had to go back in and change everything and it was like just doing all the work all over again and they gave us two weeks to do it yeah because we thought you know using their images that they publish etc would help us sell their products and therefore make us buy more stuff from them and therefore you know be better for them but yeah we're not allowed <laughs> yeah. so you can you can open you're allowed to open stuff and take your own pictures and do whatever you want but you're not allowed to use their pictures and uh, yeah anyway it is what it is I don't know what I've. Uh, you don't know what you've watched. I've missed missed something up above about GW included used to buy a bit from tiny independent Polish sculptors. Uh, do you want me to read it? Yeah. So Tony says, Asma, I don't play anything. I'm so rubbish, but I do play in all sorts. GW included. I used to buy a bit from tiny independent Polish sculptures. Not bought anything recently, but I'm curious to see how it works. Now, as I want to support these upcoming talents and my very beloved MLG. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. And uh, do, you, do you mean epic as in epic scale, like the small stuff, Asmo, or do you mean epic as in like the really big centerpiece models that are uh, a bit costly? Because I do think, that, I know that there's a lot of work goes into some of these figures, but the new uh, there's a new Kragnos model, which uh, is a totally new god that they've created for Age of Sigma, and he goes on to pre-order on Saturday, and the RRP for that one model is a hundred pounds. Uh, yeah, he yeah he's a hundred pounds for that one guy. So you could pay a hundred quid for one model, or you could buy a whole starter set of Warhammer, like Soul Wars, Age of Sigma Soul Wars, that comes with like fifty or sixty models or whatever it is. All those, uh, all those undead and the Stormcast figures and what have you. It's yeah, it it, it doesn't really balance out. It doesn't really balance out. But unfortunately, I, I love a lot of the figures. So this guy, he's like I've probably mentioned before, this guy is like my favorite GW model at the moment. I think this guy is absolutely amazing. He's, uh, I think he's the best figure that GW have produced for a long, long time. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think you're right the, about him being based on like usefulness in the game and uh, power in the game so space marine in, uh, eliminators 
Space Marine Eliminators, they're way overpriced. £30 for three guys with sniper rifles is like outrageous, really. But they're so good in the game. They are so good in the game that you're going to need to use them. So, but I've seen I've seen people using converted figures uh, as them because they didn't want to pay for uh, ten pound a figure for some like troops, effectively. And the other thing that I'm not keen on with some of the newer kits that they've done is the the lack of posability. So those uh, eliminators. See you soon, Brother See yep. See you soon. The, the Eliminator figures. I've, I've built some myself. And and the there isn't a lot of customization. So if you buy an Intercessors kit, the standard like new Marines, if you buy if you buy those, then you can use any combination of arms and guns and there's various other equipment and what have you. You can make a whole multitude of poses. But the Eliminators, you can either give them Las fusils or I can't remember what the other ones are called the sniper rifle looking things but there really isn't a lot of flexibility which I think is a real shame alright then right then we, uh, we're going to go and follow well, we've got Goblin about Square two, two minutes left so yeah. Just giving you a two minute warning. Fair enough. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, we'll uh, best tell everybody what our schedule is going to be. So, tomorrow we're going to be streaming uh, 8 pm until 9 pm, and I'm going to be painting a bit more of this brass scorpion, I think, is what I'm going to be doing tomorrow night. Is it now? Mm, yeah, I think so. So, a bit more brass scorpion tomorrow, so we're going to move on to painting some red and uh, some other colours. So we'll do some of these armour panels and then my wash on the main body of the thing should have uh, fully dried and cured. So uh, we'll get this guy in. So we're going to paint some of this. So these purple guys here that I've painted, so these are um, bodies that are incorporated into all this all this beautiful beautiful cabling and pipework and what have you that is underneath the model so uh, so detailed so we might work on a bit of that tomorrow I think and because uh, watching me paint large panels red is gonna be a bit boring so I think we're gonna paint some of this under here all these um, all this like ras um, ras all this bronze and uh, like rusty colour that I've used under here and some of this cabling that needs picking out once the ink is dry and then we'll get a bit of paint on these bodies so I've painted them like this kind of purpley colour and then we're going to work that up to a a, a bit of flesh colour so these guys look like they're uh, corpses that are buried in there Hi. yeah so I love this model. I've wanted this model ever since it first came out and uh, Mrs. MLG, this is why she got me it for my birthday. And the amount of detail that is on this thing is immense. So we're gonna uh, shoot over now to Goblin Squire's stream. So if you'd like to join us and when we get there, uh, when we get there, if you could refresh your browser so you count as a view for him, that would be amazing. So uh, we've got a couple of seconds. Oh, there we go. You can. Uh... Oh, that's the. That's that's the wrong. Uh... <laughs> that's the wrong code, isn't yeah. it? I can't remember how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's try something else. Yeah, we're. I'm getting there. That's all right. That's all right. So yeah. So oh, see you later, Naz. <laughs> Goodbye. We. Uh... Hello. Excellent. So can they still hear me? Yes, awesome. Super. So tomorrow night, 8pm, and then uh, Skyrim Sunday at 4, if you, uh, if you can join us. Thank you very much for watching us.
Thanks for watching us. Well, uh, Bye, Moxie. Thank you, everyone. We do appreciate it. See you all later. Bye. Yeah. Oh, no. One perfect timing. Hello, mighty Monster Crew. Very good to see you all here. And uh, big hello. Thank you for stopping by. It's great to see you this evening. I hope you're having a 